What's up, bro? So I'm waiting for Jasmine to join me. When she does join towards the end. Okay, okay, hold up, hold up. Do y'all see me? I don't, I don't, I don't know how to work this. <laughs> you good? What's I up, Jasmine? I never, I'm never on it, so I feel like an old lady every time I get on Instagram. <laughs> All right, so you, so you got your volume up. Oh, y'all can hear me. Let me go. I can hear you. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Okay. You good? Yeah, I'm good. What's up, Miss Jasmine Sullivan? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. You know, um, we got a lot to talk about, but at first. I want to talk about this Super Bowl performance, man. Like, you killed it. Thank you. And I'm sure you killed it. I love the way that you paid homage to Whitney Houston during your rehearsals. Um, but how was that feeling? Just, you know, you at this point in your career and you just performed at the Super Bowl. Um, it was amazing. It was unbelievable. Like, I, I never even thought that I would make it to the Super Bowl and get to perform at the Super Bowl. So I was very shocked and surprised, but also honored. And, um, you know, I I wore the sweatsuit uh, the day before at the rehearsal to honor Whitney because I love her. And obviously everybody knows that nobody will ever do a rendition better than Whitney. Like she is, she's the standard. Um, but I just wanted to carry her with me. And, um, you know, I, I enjoyed myself and I'm glad I got a chance to experience it. It was a great experience. And uh, like I said, you did your thing. Like, I, I do want to know, because I've seen the conversations on Twitter, and I would have loved and everybody else would have loved for you to perform by yourself. So what was that deciding factor for them to say, hey, Jasmine, you're going to do a duet with Eric Church? Um, yeah, I just got the phone call saying that um, we want you to sing at the Super Bowl, but we want it to be a duet. And I thought it would be cool. I mean, obviously, we come from different backgrounds, and um, I actually hadn't heard much of Eric before I got a chance to perform with them. But um, I thought it was cool what it was symbolizing about, you know, kind of bringing everybody together for a common cause or whatever. Um, and that's what I feel like it was. It was a blending of two different sounds and two different people who got two different backgrounds and just coming together, you know, for the anthem. Yeah, you, you definitely killed it. How do you feel, like, of everything that's going on in this moment right now? It feels good. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot, uh, especially for me, because I'm like usually home and like out the spotlight and everything. And so much is happening all at once. I, I had so many wonderful opportunities, the Super Bowl being one. And just like people wanting to work with me that I've loved all my life and like calling to do songs and stuff like that. So it's amazing. Um, you know, I'm, I am trying to keep my head about me, keep my wits about me. Um, and stay focused really on God. Like that's that's what I learned most is like God gotta come first and everything else second. So that's basically where I'm at right now. Hey, can I get an amen? Because Ooh. without faith and without God, like where will we be? <laughs> hey, so look, I wanna talk about hotels, man. Like, you know, I know me and you had a previous conversation before. Like, first of all, I'm a fan of Jasmine Sullivan. Thank um you. Hotels is a great body of work. Like I thought it was an album and it's an EP, but that to be an EP with that body of work and you got the interludes and everything. When can people expect the album? Because I didn't even think it was an EP at first until I heard you say this is an EP. Well, yeah, I decided for it to be an album. I mean, an EP because um, it's just not a lot of songs in there. So I was just like, I know after being away for six years, I don't feel like this is enough material. Um, but we're working on something um, um, for hotels to kind of extend the project. I actually haven't started working on the album yet, but I have some like ideas, but I'm not even at that space. Like I'm still in the mindset of kind of like taking hotels as far as I can. I feel like there's so many different avenues I could go. I reached out to Issa. She reached out back and you know we started talking about making this a visual project and stuff like that. So I feel like for this moment, I feel like it's important to kind of stay at this place because I feel like hotels is, it's just a, it's just a moment and it's a movement really. And um, it's for women and it's about women and, and our stories and, and black women specifically. And I feel like we kind of need to stay here and like 
tell our side of the story and, and, and let people hear it and make them listen to it, for real, for real. And I love that because I've seen a conversation between like all the beautiful black women on Twitter and, and Instagram. And I'm glad you touched on the Issa Rae thing because I, I would love to see uh, Issa Rae and Jasmine Sullivan bring that visual to that whole hotel's life, you know? Um, but I do want to, I want to go deeper into hotels, man. You got a song called On It. And when I first heard it, I'm like, yo, it gives, it's a, it's a nasty song, but in a soulful way. <laughs> so I just want to know, what was the process of you and Ari Lennox recording that record? Well, let me just say, Ari was the, the brainchild for On It. Um, she actually started working on that song before I even heard the song or anything like that. Um, I just had her tell on the project and then the more i thought about it i was like people are gonna be real mad if they go on the project and they don't actually have a physical solve for me all right they gonna cuss me out so i was like ari i was like girl they gonna throw throw stuff at me if you don't be on this project in the right way so she like went through her catalog and she sent me the song and i i just got with it now y'all know i don't do like sexy songs i don't do at least y'all never heard Myself. And that's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> Did you feel nervous, like, being more sexual on this song? Um, it was a lot. When I, when I heard um, Spit On It specifically, that lyric specifically was a lot. <laughs> well, spit On It was fine, but when we got to the end and said Spit On It, I was like, um, you sure about this one? But um, I loved it. I mean, Ari is, like, kind of in your face, and I love that about her about her lyrics and stuff like that. And I felt like it was good for me to push myself. Plus I'm grown, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like yeah. the things that I wouldn't have spoke about earlier on in my career. Now that I'm 33, it's like, girl, just say it. You sit on it too, so. <laughs> and a lot of women can relate to it, you know? So, I mean, that's that's probably like a lot of people's favorite song on the album. Yeah, um, But then you got a record called Put It Down and mm -hmm. you talked about, you know, him living with his mama and, paying this rent. I want to know, what's your views on relationship? Like, how do you feel about splitting the bills and who's the provider in the relationship? Um, I think it's cool to split the bills. I also feel like relationships are very personal. So it really is between you and that person. Like, y'all have to make a decision on how y'all want it to run. You can't base it off of how your mama used to do it, how your grandma used to do it. It's, right. it's based off of you, where you at, and, and what you want to contribute, what you want the other person to contribute. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I definitely agree with it. Like, people don't understand a relationship is a union. It should be 50-50. It shouldn't be one-sided. I mean, we all see these conversations on Twitter right now, like, from everybody wanting a toxic relationship to people wanting relationships. So, I mean, I feel like it's all over. Yeah, I mean, you make the terms up for your relationship at the time that you're in it. Like, it just depends. Somebody may be the breadwinner. Somebody may... Um, give to the relationship in a different way like it's all up to how you want to rock with your partner basically. Agree. And speaking of hotels, I gotta ask you this. Do you think everybody experiences a whole phase? Um, I don't know. I think they may, they should. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they do. Um, but I think that you have to, in order to get to a final destination, you kind of got to go through some things. So I think that, um, I mean, you probably should wild out a little bit within reason and, and obviously safely. And yeah. um, I don't know if I should give that uh, type of advice right now during Corona. You, maybe you should chill for your whole phase, baby. Come back did. with Corona. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I think it's all just about growth and experience in life and, you know, you experience some things and then you know from that whether you want to do it or not or, like, how you feel about it. Definitely. And, uh, and the whole phase isn't gender specific. So I do want to let... No, it's not. Men men have the whole phase. Yeah, I want I want to let everybody know that too. But I, I agree with you. I feel like everybody should experience the whole phase. Um, I mean, is... you don't have to. Obviously, if you can go an easier route or you, if you feel like you don't have to then don't but i mean if you do my, my project is more more so about like if you do experience stuff like that or a whole phase per se you don't have to feel ashamed about it as long as like you grow from it and you figure out who you are who you want to be how you want to be in this world that's the main part that's the thing that you have to focus on not about that and feeling ashamed about anything that you've done or experienced 
Yeah, and, and I like it that you had like your girlfriends on there. You had the the grown woman conversation. She's right about it, like Donna's tale. Like that was the the auntie, the mother, the 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 grandmother conversation. So who was all a part of that conversation? Um, that so my mom curated that at her house. Um, she had like my aunts there. It was cousins. It was like it was my mom's group of girls. Um, okay. So yeah, it was it was definitely auntie-ish. Every voice that you heard obviously sound like an auntie. They were they were aunties and grandmoms and stuff like that. And just kind of to show that number one, as women, we have these conversations from the time that we're younger to the time we get older. And you know, like to kind of bridge the gap so you don't feel so removed from women, you know, that are older and feel like we we God willing, we're gonna get there one day and you're gonna experience something. So they were speaking from their long life of experiences and Baby, they was more turned up than us. Like they, they was turned up at the. <laughs> they had that. They had that grown woman talk. They right? was turned up, but I love that. I'm like, okay, you know, you know, we, we're women. We figuring stuff out, and by the time we get their age, you know, they, they like, listen, this is life. This and this is what it is. So I thought it was cool. Yeah, and, I, and I, like I said, I love the fact that you were able to talk about that on this album because a lot of women actually like can relate to that not even just women like men can relate to that as well but i do gotta ask you this jasmine and one of the songs you mentioned you made a tinder profile i know you are in a relationship now but did you really make a tinder profile no i don't even know how to work my damn phone <laughs> <laughs> i can't make a tinder profile but um you know big up to everybody on tinder <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, before you go, I do want to know this. Like, you've been killing these performances, man. That Tiny Desk performance, when I tell you, it was amazing. It was something about you just, like, performing it in the crib and just hearing you sing. And then when you took it back to Let It Burn, like, I felt like it was the 2021 version of Let It Burn. It, mm -hmm. it was just a different feeling. So you had that. You had the HBO performance. You had the, uh, the Tonight Show. You mm -hmm. had the Super Bowl. But... Uh, before you get into performing, like, what's some of your routines? Like, how does Jasmine Sullivan get ready to pre prepare to kill a performance like that? Um, well, you know, you rehearse, obviously. Like, working with my band has been such a pleasure because everybody is so talented. Like, everybody that I work with really can stand alone on their own. And we come together and just try to make something magical. Obviously, um, you know, we are older. I've been working with some of the same people for a while. Um, so there is a comfortability that comes with getting older in your craft and um, not feeling like you got to um, show off or do something for like it's all about you and how you feel about your music and expressing yourself and so that's kind of the space that I'm in now where I'm just enjoying myself like while I'm performing and I feel like that's what people are getting like just me loving my music yeah and I love it man I love it so before we go I'm going to turn these comments back on and just see if one or two people got a question from Miss Sullivan before she gets off the live. Um, yeah, so if y'all got a question for Jasmine Sullivan, this is the time. I don't know if you can see the comments. No, I can't. It's not moving. Okay. Anymore. So I'm going to pick the question, but make sure it's a legit, good question that you she don't can ask answer. nothing crazy. Don't ask nothing off the wall or <laughs> none of that. Okay, I love you. I love you. Yeah, we all love uh, Jasmine from Thank Philly. You. Yeah, if, if y'all got a question, let me know. Y'all send y'all questions. Oh, these are the little questions right here. Okay, okay. You don't know how to work it either? Nah, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know how to work it. Hold up. <laughs> let me see. Oh, these are a lot of questions, though. Okay, I remember we talked about this before, Jasmine, but... You disappeared on us. What was one thing you can tell us about your silence? How important was that time for you? Um, I feel like a lot of people should take breaks when they feel like they need to. And y'all know I'm no stranger to taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just think it's good for like centering yourself and, and figure out, figuring out um, where you kind of want to go in life. And um, that's where some of you know my break started from obviously i had uh, issues with like relationships and stuff that contributed to that at other moments in my life mm -hmm. um but like i'm a i'm a fan of taking a pause with anything that's social media like if you feel like you need a break get off of social media like figure some things out for yourself and then you can get back on and rejoin life there's no 
shame with like taking a break. Definitely. And I feel like like you did your thing. That was a six year hiatus from a fire ass album to another fire ass EP. So oh, thank you. you know. All right, I'm gonna do one more thing. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. <laughs> Y'all funny. I got a lot of questions for you. Uh Trying to find a good question. Nah. Okay. Well, let, let, let's let's ask this. I'm I'm gonna do a throwback one. How did you feel when you wrote Lions and Tigers and Bears? What was your headspace back then? Oh wow, Lions, Tigers, and Bears. I had literally just had a conversation with a guy that I was with. And um, we ba he basically was breaking up with me. And he was just like, you know, just because you love somebody don't mean that you meant to be with them. And that was like really my first love and my first time kind of coming out of the fantasy world of like, you know, if you love somebody, you can be with them. That's not how life works. Like sometimes it just don't work no matter how much you love somebody. It's wow. so many factors. Um, and now definitely that I'm older, I, I, I know that. But that was my first time being experienced to that logic. And so... I wrote a song about it and the fact that I kind of combined the lions, tigers, and bears and like the fantasy of that um, was basically how I grew up thinking about love. Like, oh, you know, it can work. If you just love, all you got to do is love somebody, but that's not the case. So we, I combined the fact that I was saying the opposite with the fact, with the music sounding like, almost like Disney-like. Mm, okay, I love that. And, and this is my last one before we go. I'm going to ask you a question off that. Like most people know, and most people don't know, you're in a relationship now. You've been in a relationship for a good amount of time. So, how has your relationship influenced this project, uh, Hotels? Um, it hasn't really influenced the project. Like, a lot of Hotels was about a lot of moments that I had before I got into my relationship. But I will say, being in a, a healthy, steady relationship just makes everything easier. Like you ain't fighting and all that stuff that kind of distracts you from what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, it just makes life easier when you got somebody that you know got your back and is looking out for your best interest and truly loves you for you. So it's helped me personally in that way. And I love to see it. Well, Jasmine Sullivan, I appreciate you for stepping into the shade room. If y'all don't have hotels, make sure you get hotels. And if you ain't see one of Jasmine Sullivan's live ass performances <laughs> y'all better get on that youtube real quick search it do something blast it soundbar all of that but i appreciate you jasmine for stepping thank you y'all was nice to me today thank you <laughs> hey yeah that's what i said it wasn't too bad even though no. we turned the comments off but i turned the comments back on and it's like yo queen i love you hotel uh, it's, it's all love in the comments i appreciate y'all so much all right thank you jasmine all right bye